Hey, what's up, everybody? BDF44 coming at you with another video. All right, so 103 and 90 was the score, and the Golden State Warriors win the NBA Finals. The NBA champion is in San Francisco. Once again, congratulations to all the Warrior fans out there. It was tremendous to watch Steph Curry do what he did. Finals MVP, well deserved. He finally got it. Caps off his career with what has been eluding him. And I, I get it. He was crying at the end of this one. He said it hit different, and I totally get it. They played a tough series through six, beat a tough Boston Celtic team, and they had a long journey back from where they were when they lost against the Toronto Raptors, and Clay got hurt, KD got hurt, KD left, all kinds of stuff. New players come in, young players come in, Wiseman gets drafted, then has the knee injury out for the season. All of these different things come together, and they still find a way to win the championship in 2022 after ha after basically just barely making the play-in tournament last year we knocked them off and then they were further knocked off i believe by the memphis grizzlies is that how that went i don't remember but ultimately uh they just they just weren't able to do much and then of course coming back this season retooled ready to go nba champions once again so congratulations to everybody on the golden state warriors as far as the Boston Celtics are concerned, they got off to a quick start, as we said, if you watch my halftime video, and then it just became a game of runs, and the Golden State Warriors' runs were much stronger. Lots of turnovers. When you have 23 turnovers and only 13 steals for the Golden State Warriors versus those 23 turnovers for the Boston Celtics, you best believe 10 unforced turnovers not going to get it done. Not only that, but you have Steph Curry just hitting haymaker after haymaker after haymaker. It, it, it became a situation where it was just utterly demoralizing. Boston Celtics had a 22-point deficit, cut it to 10 or even a little lower than that. But, you know, guys like Wiggins and Steph Curry, of course, Klay Thompson, all these guys making plays, Draymond Green making plays. It was very difficult to watch the Jason Tatum in the fourth quarter because you could, you could just sense that he was so tentative, man. It was almost like watching a guy just in his worst nightmare – you know what I mean? It was almost like watching a guy in his worst nightmare. But I thought he handled himself with absolute class. You know, after a, a performance like that where you know you, you just you didn't prove yourself to be a champion. But he did prove himself to be a worthy, worthy star in this league. People are going to snatch the superstar label from him. Rightfully so. I cringe when I say rightfully slow. But I can't call you a champion superstar when you have the type of fourth quarters in the finals that he has shown us. Granted, you must give the Golden State Warriors championship defense all of the credit in the world because they proved to be the superior team, of course, in this series ultimately. But Jason Tatum, he was a real recipient of a lot of that bad, uh, a lot of that great defense, excuse me. It was bad for him because he had to take on it, but that great defense, and ultimately he wasn't able to overcome it. I thought Jalen Brown was fantastic. Uh, down the stretch, though, he was trying to be aggressive to make up for it. But ultimately, the turnovers, uh, the 19 three-point shots made by the Golden State Warriors, and then just everything else that the Warriors did. You know, you look at the, the, the assist battle, they tied the Boston Celtics at 27. You look at the interior battle, they kind of kept it close. You look at the rebounding total, they won that. So it was, it was one of those situations where the Warriors one-upped them in just about every statistical category. And really, they probably two-upped them, but the comebacks made it so that it was more respectable than it actually was. It was just an all-Golden State Warrior game tonight. And uh, in a hostile environment in Boston with a, with a resilient team like the Celtics, you must give the Golden State Warriors credit. Andrew Wiggins once again showed us he was a career. This was a career-defining season for Andrew Wiggins. Made the All-Star team, started the All-Star team. Now, I want to rewind even before that because Andrew Wiggins – took a stand and said he wasn't going to take the vaccine, went back on that stand in a very controversial way. And I think he lives to, 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 to uh, be very pleased with that decision. I think he lives to appreciate that decision for whatever it's worth to whoever's listening. He's the NBA champion and he started the NBA finals and the, the all-star game. And you know what? Sometimes it's just about swallowing your pride and doing what you have to do, man the end of the day you know what i mean it wasn't what he wanted to do i'm sure he did a lot of praying meditating about it it was against his beliefs 
But he chose his team. He chose the game. He worked hard. He played his role. It wasn't just that decision. It was also his hard work, staying healthy, a lot of good play, a lot of good luck. A lot of help from his teammates, obviously. But his role was defined. That's what was said. Draymond Green mentioned his role was defined. And I think that role was to crash the glass, be a defensive stopper, and ultimately take shots as you roam. Hit the mid-range shot, be a mid-range threat at all times. I saw he was consistently taking that shot throughout the, the, the playoffs. And I thought he was very easily one of the best players, if not the best player, on the Warriors throughout the playoffs. Not just in this series, throughout the playoffs. So even though Steph Curry won the finals MVP, and rightfully so, I will not forget how much of a championship-level impact that Andrew Wiggins played on this series and these playoffs on both ends of the floor. He's a different player right now. Whatever you thought of Andrew Wiggins going into this season, he's turned he's turned that up about seven to eight notches going into next season. Now I'm expecting him to continue to perform at this level. Now I'm conti- I'm going to assume that he continues to stay in this role, and I think he's going to be another. It's going to be another All Star year for Andrew Wiggins. And if it ain't All Star year, I expect to see him play well in the playoffs because he's proven it. From here on out, Andrew Wiggins is a proven Finals champion so I want to put that out there you got to put so much more respect on this man's name I don't see him the same no more that's over with Draymond Green much has been said you know I I gotta give him his credit he did it he was able to effectively do his podcast take on the brunt of bad play because he did play horribly and and, and took on the brunt of, of, of the results of that people talking about it obviously took on the, the pressure of, of going into the Boston Celtics arena and taking on all that they threw at him. And then ultimately at the end was able to play just as good enough as he needed to after struggling throughout the start of the series. Played as good enough as he needed to. Defensively, rebounding the ball, looking to score, not being hesitant just because three-point shots weren't falling. Not being tentative just because he didn't start off the series looking any good. But continuing to turn because he knew who he was, an NBA champion and a Hall of Famer who has a very unique game that isn't brought to you by the statistics or how many fouls he's able to not make or what have you, technicals and all that. His role is to be someone that makes things difficult for the opponent by any means necessary. Make the game ugly, get in people's heads, make sure you have a connection with the referees, however that goes, and to use all six of your fouls at all times. Because that's his role, you let him get away with whatever he does. And you understand that this is the result of it. Because not only is he going to do all those other things, but he's also going to be a glue guy for your offense and arguably the best defensive player in the game. Simple as that. So we can talk a lot about what he can't do or what he didn't do in terms of his focus. But you make sure you tell everybody that he won the championship at the end of that. Don't forget that part. And as far as Klay Thompson's concerned, listen, he started the playoffs off really, really slow. All right, he's coming back from injury, and he didn't start the season. He was injured for the majority of the season. So he, this is like literally right now for Klay Thompson, this is like February, right, for his season. So I expect to see an even better Klay Thompson next year. That's what scares me the most <laughs> about this Golden State Warriors team. I can very see, easily see them coming out of the Western Conference next year as well. And Klay Thompson's going to have a huge to do with that. He played defense, even though he's not. You know, his legs wasn't quite underneath him like that. He hit haymakers, even though the shot wasn't necessarily falling like that. All the things you needed him to do, ultimately, in the end, he was able to do. Down the stretch of game five, getting a big stop, hitting big shots. At the end of every game, even when he wasn't hitting shots in the first half, he would come back around and do things in the second half. It was only one game that I remember he actually was a problem in the fourth quarter where he turned the ball over. Other than that, much has been said about how poorly he played but you're going to understand also that he had a huge impact on this series. And because of it, the Golden State Warriors are the NBA champions. Talk about Jordan Poole as well. He didn't have the greatest series for himself, but you understand that this young fella is going to be one of the best scorers in the league going forward. Bar none, as he continues to rise, he already has a championship in his belt. If he doesn't become comfortable with himself after this first championship, like it, it has happened with some guys, if he continues to stay hungry and keep his foot on the gas, he could be a part of this future Golden State Warrior team that should not skip a beat at all at all 
as players like himself, Moses Moody, Jonathan Kaminga, Wiseman, GP2, Wiggins, carry the Golden State Warriors into the next generation. Jordan Poole, they got a very, very, very bright future with the youngsters. And the older guys can stick around or go out gracefully however they want to do it. Their timeline is free because of the core that the young Warriors have. That is a special unit right there that already has a championship under their belt with these youngsters, which means any young team that goes up against that particular set of Warriors understands that they already have championship pedigree already before they even get started being whoever they're going to be. Jonathan Kaminga, they've already had finals experience. That's what makes them so scary. Think about a guy like Kavon Looney. I don't know if the Warriors are going to be able to keep him, but he capped off his Warriors career if it is going to end here if they do not get to keep him he's capped off his Warriors career with an impactful playoff performance they could not have won this championship without Kevon Looney make no mistake about it there's a lot going to be said about all the other players around this series but they don't even get out of the second round they don't even get out of the second round without Kevon Looney Understand that he was the trump card against the Memphis Grizzlies. Wasn't nobody able to get nothing going against him. He neutralized a guy like Brandon Clark, who had been offensive rebounding like crazy in the previous series he had been in. He made it so that that guy wasn't rebounding like that in the series that he was in involving himself. So I will remember the impact that Kavon Looney had not only on these finals, but also in the series leading up to these finals, including... Him being the best defensive player against Luka Doncic that maybe any of us have ever seen. So when we talk about the Golden State Warriors, you're talking about Gary Payton II. You're talking about Otto Porter Jr. who hit some huge shots tonight. Three-point shots kept falling for him early on. He's going to also be a free agent. Caps off his Warrior career with the championship if he doesn't resign. You just got to appreciate what Steve Kerr did. Even though he made some decisions, but leaning on some guys that you didn't want him to trust, I called him out for it. Ultimately, he had it right. He had it right because he was able to use more players than the Boston Celtics did, giving the Celtics more things to worry about than the Celtics were giving him. And that's ultimately why he won the championship, in my opinion. It was the fact that he used Bielitsa. It was the fact that he used Iguodala. It was the fact that he continued to go deeper into his bench to keep his guys fresh. At the end of the day, the Boston Celtics just simply ran out of gas. That was a tired ball club. And the Golden State Warriors, even though they're a little older, they were fresher. And that was because there was a lot more trust amongst their guys than ultimately I felt the Boston Celtics had in theirs. Emi Udoka just didn't trust enough of his bench. At the end of the day, he just didn't trust enough of those guys. I think that they put up a valiant effort though all series long. You want to talk about the Celtics too, you got to give them all the credit in the world. Al Horford and the, and, and the way that he played tonight, even though he didn't have the greatest finals, he did start off the series with a 27-point game and, and really had a huge impact throughout the series hitting the three-point shot and playing defense obviously you want to mention Jason Tatum even though he had an up and down series much is going to be said about the wrong that he did I will also remember how great he was in, in, in good portions of these playoffs on both sides of the floor including locking up KD which was a legendary thing that no one else has ever done you got to give credit to those Boston Celtics because that is one of the best defenses I've ever seen even though they didn't close out against Steph Curry in a way that would make you feel like they're the greatest defense ever because believe you me, he busted that up. But in every other series they were in, they locked people up. And then throughout the series, throughout the season rather, since they made the trades that they did during them, you know, to get Derek White and Tice, that team has been one of the best teams we've seen. They just were not able to score enough and that's why I didn't pick them to win the series. They just did not have enough consistency within their scoring. If anything, I just think they need to find themselves a glue guy, somebody who can help facilitate the basketball for them. Or think to work it into their system to do more of that because they are a team that can work together in that way. That's how they got this far. They're just not good enough to beat an elite offense in terms of keeping up with them with their scoring. They need that passer. They need that Lonzo Ball, that Draymond Green, that LeBron James, anybody of that elk 
who can facilitate the basketball from any position on the floor. A Jokic type of guy. Somebody, Ben Simmons, needs to be in Boston to help get the ball to Tatum and Brown and all the guys that they're going to have going forward. That should be a priority. Get yourself a facilitator. And of course, man, we got to think about Robert Williams. How much of an effort did he put up? Man, he didn't get the championship, but boy, was he worthy of it. The way that he rim protected, the way that he played on that knee that needs surgery. I'd imagine he's going to miss the start of the season, Celtics fans. I'd imagine that he's going to need that surgery. I don't know. I'm not going to assume necessarily, but it is something to reasonably think. But uh, the effort that he put in there, particularly in this game and in the last, heck, next, the last three games, he's been amazing. In the paint, blocking shots, doing what he has to do. And a healthy Robert Williams probably is the difference in some ways. Because you saw what he could do. And it was a game three, I believe it was. Yeah. Blocking shots, being a terror making it so that Golden State couldn't get nothing going. So I will not be forgetting Tom Lord when thinking about these playoffs and these finals because that dude was, he was tough. Even on a messed up knee, he was not to be played with. And of course, Marcus Smart, man, defensive player of the year, you know, you want to give credit. Marcus Smart was awesome as well. Even though he didn't have the greatest game tonight, you saw him help his team on both sides of the floor. You saw him force turnover. You saw him play well, good defense against Steph Curry and, and various players throughout these playoffs. He's earned his respect as a playoff performer on both sides of the floor. He hit a lot of big shots in these playoffs as well. Won't be forgotten. Marcus Smart is the real deal, man. Derek White had some big moments in these playoffs, even though he was wildly inconsistent. You would love to have seen him play better in this game, but ultimately I'll remember him playing well in this, these finals. You know, it's just... The Boston Celtics, they just gave it what they got. You know, at the end of the day, my, my humble opinion, the Boston Celtics just have a hard time keeping the ball in their hands. They turn the ball over a lot. You know what I mean? It's what they, it, it, we knew that going into this series that both teams turned the ball over. Unfortunately, the Boston Celtics just turned it over a bit more than the Golden State Warriors. Um, it's understood that the Boston Celtics, uh, you know, are in a position right now where they could very easily come back with the same team and feel really confident. But I believe there are other teams that are going to retool. And I do think it's important that the Boston Celtics continue to retool as well. They have to address their bench. If they had a couple of more guys that they trusted on their bench besides Derek White and Peyton Pritchard and Al Horford, I think they would have been in a better position to extend this series in this particular game. Or maybe even win the series at some point. So um, that that is something I'm sure they will do. And... Uh, it's all about the Golden State Warriors. <laughs> it, 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 that's that's it. Now you talk about the NBA champions. You know the season is over, as we know. It's time for the for the Warriors to get back to San Francisco and celebrate and all that good stuff. And of course, we'll have the draft coming up in about eight days, I believe it is. So that's going to be really exciting. Um, you know what I mean. So keep on sticking with your boy BDF44 as I continue to uh, learn about this NBA draft and, and, and get back to you guys on on the building of my team, particularly the, the Los Angeles Lakers. And, you know, I think for myself, I, I just want to tip off this particular video by uh, just giving all the credit to both teams and, and, and just to a, to a great season. You know, obviously my team wasn't involved in it. I'm going to do an entirely different video as a Laker fan because I just didn't want to bleed that energy into this particular video. But I really do appreciate what both teams brought to the table all season long. You know, you talk about a Boston Celtic team that I called out earlier in the year. You know, told them that they needed to meet us at the altar. Told them that I thought my Laker team was playing for a championship number 18 and, I, and that there was no excuse for them to not be competing for a championship. I felt they hadn't gotten better. I felt like they could get better, and I thought they were being too tentative as a, as a front office. And sure enough, they did exactly what they were supposed to do to, to change my opinion, get, making those trades, and really making me eat those words all season long as my team went in the opposite direction and ended up being a team that didn't even make the playing tournament and their team uh, it was here tonight in game six available to compete for a championship so hats off to the Boston Celtics for doing exactly what they were supposed to do which was meeting the Warriors at the altar and the Warriors were able to meet them and get that victory 
So congratulations to both teams, but a special congratulations to Steph Curry, man. Finally got that finals MVP. The shots he was hitting tonight, seven assists, seven rebounds. I think he had several steals. I don't know if he missed one three. Did he miss one three? I know I saw one miss there. Just phenomenal. The shots he was hitting tonight, he left no room for questioning on whether or not he was going to be the NBA MVP, finals MVP rather, or the NBA champion this evening. He put his team on his back. And even when the three started to wane a little bit in the third and fourth quarter, he put the ball on the floor and he continued to drive. He drove at everybody. Anybody who was on him was getting taken and he was connecting. Steph Curry was the best player on the floor tonight. Steph Curry is the greatest shooter to ever play the game. Steph Curry has four NBA championship rings. Simple as that. You're going to call him a champion. You're going to call him a game changer because that's exactly what he did. The greatest three-point shooter of all time, the greatest playoff three-point shooter, the greatest finals three-point shooter. That's the one right there. You could totally see why my guy Braun wants to play with that guy because that is the guy that you know for a fact you get him a pass, he's hitting that shot. And the thing about him is his threes are so impactful. It's not just threes. He's playing to the momentum. Whether it's your momentum or the opponent's momentum, he's controlling it. The shots that you need to, to make you, and you say, yo, that if you hit that shot, the crowd goes wild. He's a master at hitting that shot. The shot that'll make the crowd go silent, he hit that shot too. And I'm telling you, when you got a player that can bust up a defense like the Boston Celtics 2022 defense, you understand that we're talking about a first ballot Hall of Famer of the highest order. And yes, there are going to be some people who are going to have to move around on that all-time list. After a performance like tonight, after him getting finals MVP, after him getting his fourth ring, yes. I'm not sure who it is. I don't even know if I'm, I'm the guy you want to talk to in regards to saying who's the top 10 player of all time. I haven't done enough to put myself in that conversation. But what I can say is some people are going to move around. That's a fact. So that is what I got, man. That is my video on this particular series. I want to thank everybody for rocking with me throughout this entire playoffs. That concludes my playoff thoughts series, obviously, because now we're going to be going into the off season and it's going to be entirely different stuff to talk about but we will be talking um yeah in fact this is my favorite time of the year now we start getting to what bdf 44 is about because really we're going to start molding teams learning about teams finding out what the lay of the land is going to be and things change so fast in the nba for all we know it could be an entirely different look next year in terms of what to expect so keep your eyes open for bdf 44 i'm gonna come back at y'all and, of course, I'm going to do a video right now from a Laker perspective. Um, so check that out as well. But, yeah, congratulations to the 2022 NBA champions, Golden State Warriors, and as well as the runner-ups, the Boston Celtics. My name is BDL44. I thank you all for watching. I'm out.